Hey, oh, wow. it's time to do the video, Cat. Cat stole my chair. Today we're going to be talking about keyframing. What's keyframing? Whoa! What was that? It was animation! What? How? How did we do that so easily? Well, today I'm gonna talk a little bit about basic understanding of keyframing, how movement generally works, and how you can make simple effects to add to your videos. Something I've learned over doing YouTube is often you don't need to do the ridiculously hard edits. It's one thing if you're doing motion graphics and that's, you know, generally all there is to show, but on YouTube, we're not, not, a lot of people aren't producing these really big works that require all this editing. Sometimes it is fun to experiment, and that's what I often use my videos on my YouTube channel for, but you don't need it a lot of the time. A lot of the time, something simpler and straight to the point is more effective in capturing the viewer's attention and not overburdening them with visual stimuli. So today I wanted to just work through some simple transitions you can do basically just understanding the core ideas of how movement can look good and how to make yours look smoother. Now, there are there is like the beginner level, intermediate, professional, and just like crazy level. The, the best level would be in After Effects where you can actually manipulate the functions of whatever you're moving. However, I am... I understand that not everybody wants to do that. I don't even do that. There's presets and there are simpler actions you can do that take less time. Um, unless you want something where you can really manipulate the movement, there are advanced tutorials for that. Um, so I just wanted to start with on the screen just a simple transition, a slide. These are the most simple. We start with the object in its default position, and we're going to move that off screen. Uh, a little fun fact that I learned when I was doing this, you just put that at value in and it's minus 960 to get rid of that. Well, it's not minus 960, it's negative, so it's double 960. Yeah, but if you wanted it on the right side, it would be what, 2880? And it's gone, but it's on the right side instead of the left. So that's if you have it in uh, 1920 by 1080. Uh, it would be different for whatever um, frame size you have, but these are just general numbers. You don't have to remember them. You can really just, and I often do, just slide the thing on and off the screen until it's gone. Um, but it is just quicker when you do know it. Uh, not that I practice what I preach. So if you want this to fade in super easily, oh, I already put it on by accident. What it would start with is it would look like this. These keyframes are what keyframes look like in every program, these diagonals. These diagonals indicate what you're placing on the timeline and where it is. Where it would start is here. These are the base keyframes of where it appears in frame where it fits exactly inside of it. Um, and then as I did, negative 1960. Uh, that's when it's off screen. These basically indicate the placement within the frame. And when you have it on animation with that, you see the stopwatches and they're highlighted blue. That will mean that it's going to animate it in the time frame that you set it. You've set the places and between the times. So if we do that, it's going with what? One second. And then we do, but if I move that to about two seconds, it's going to take two seconds, three seconds or four seconds. It's going to take four seconds. The slower you get what I'm saying. Um, and this is just general. Um, movement. As you can see, it's comically slow and comically not doing anything at all. So how can you manipulate it to make it look a little prettier? Um, thankfully, Premiere has this little thing. If you right click it, go to Temporal Interpolation. Uh, you can do an Easy Ease. Other than being a fantastic part of NWA, Easy E can make you do this. And it'll slowly uh, come to the side and gently hit that wall instead of just like running into it like Patrick. Um, so it'll generally do that. You can do this in After Effects. I'm pretty sure you'd have to go and actually manipulate the function. Hold on. Um, I need to manipulate the function of my body by drinking some water. <sighs> what a professional. Oh God, I drank it wrong. Oh, it hurts. You can do an easy ease to make it ease to the ease. And you can also do that on the way out, or the way in. It, it, if you're coming into the frame, yeah, the starting motion. So like if we we're gonna stop here and say, okay, here it is, it's stopping, we would, it, it sets it to whatever it was. So you'd have to set it back to linear and then set it back to easy ease out or ease out. And it's not doing anything right now, but we set the ending frame and set it to an easy ease. That'll make it do that. Like it'll slowly come to the wall and just gently hit. 
Uh, again, you can actually manipulate this on your own if you wanted to. These are just quicker ways to make your transitions come in and out much simpler. Um, and this is the, the hallmark of just simple editing. Linear just basically does it like this. Linear means that in mathematical terms, it'll just go from the point without any sort of acceleration um, to the movement. Uh, there are, in After Effects, they actually have like a graph indicating how the movement will move it. It's actually like a parabola. Um, so mathematically, this is, it's all based in math. I'm an idiot, so I don't even do the math stuff. But if you know math, you could probably get away with like so many better edits than the like, knowledge is power. But for the common moron, you can actually just do these easy eases in Premiere. And that'll be the general easy path to making your movements look like smooth and simple. But what if you want to do some more? You'll notice in videos I'll have like an object do like a, it'll come like a flump and it'll have that, that sort of impact. I really like having that sort of animation in my videos where it'll go like Ooh, whoosh and you can really feel the push and pull. So today we're going to do it with the, the king of movement, uh, Giorno Giovanni. Giovanna. So we can do a lot with Giorno. I have in videos. Um, but if you wanted him just to appear, something I like to do when I'm making just a simple object or an image appear on screen and I want it to be the central focus is I'll start it at, with the scale of zero, then we'll click the clock, uh, the stopwatch to rotation and uh, we'll have it do a simple rotation. I don't really think about the values here. You can usually set it to a factor of like um, a full 360 rotation and you'll get that. But you notice it doesn't look good. Even if we add the easy ease in, it'll still look kind of whatever. So if you wanted to actually have that sort of momentum and sort of natural action that an object would have in the real world, you have to do a couple of more things with a spin. I like to continue the spin a little more until it ricochets back to the position we want it. So to do that, you would actually extend this to go here and then put it back to its position there. This will give us something like that. Um, and you can already see it feels a lot more organic when it does a movement like that. Um, I would do a little bit more to this, like we need to you know, easy ease out here. You could add a Gaussian blur, it's usually my go-to. And you do horizontal so he looks like this when he's spinning in. Some people don't like using these and I totally get it. They kind of are comical when they're overused, but when you do it at that size, you don't typically notice it, and I'll do that. You can even mess around with the scale, like, uh, the simple movement, once you understand that, then it leaves a lot to be desired, like, even here, I like to pop out when I'm doing a, a zoom in like that. And you can even have it slightly get smaller, but, again, when you're messing with uh, the easy eases, it'll not do it exactly as you want. And again, it's all about simplicity. If you do have these motions in your videos, you often just want it so it's not noticeable. The thing with editing is, you know, it is fun to do crazy stuff and learn um, how to do those things, but the most effective stuff is the simplest. So making objects appear, it really has got to match the tone. If you're having a comedy video, then stuff like this is great. Uh, you have like the text go crazy like here. The text in Premiere, they changed it in an update and I hate it because it doesn't make sense anymore. Like, you have different motion for the graphics and the video, and it's confusing, and it was only one before, and now it's multiple, and I hate it. A key thing to note if you, so I tried animating this, and then I was doing it wrong. Oh, now it's fine. Oh, because I moved the anchor point. So anchor points, um, this is just an aside, but the anchor point with objects, uh, I don't know if you press Y in this program too to move it. No, that's only uh, After Effects. The anchor point, if we look right here, this is a little anchor that'll determine where the center point of your object is. It's the anchor to the the effect. So I'm just gonna reset all of this just because. The text starts there and I don't want it there. So if I move the text to the center of the screen, it moves the anchor point too. It's very irritating. Um, so with text, um, you see every YouTuber, they go like, okay, here's my text coming on the screen but that's not very dramatic so you wanted to go boing doing to you know it is a very common trope of youtuber video game gamer youtubers to have the text pop up on screen and have a couple of explosions but it actually does show what you can do with these sorts of things so if we want to do some crazy cool text 
and have it go like, wow! You could do a blur here. Like, this is very simple. You could add a spin. Um, you could have it ricochet from the side and then back. So it'll come, well, hold on. Come over here, go like that. Something like... And then even do some uniform scale stuff. Yeah. I do have a lot of fun doing this sort of stuff because it's just like... There's some part of my id that gets, like... It's just relieved when I do chaotic effects like this. You just like feel empowered to do something in a safe setting that is just like, oh, I can make this look as bad as I want. <laughs> um, anyways, so we'll have that and it'll grow and extend out. And it really teaches you about how you can make objects move nicely. Now, that might not be up your alley in terms of craziness. So what else would you do? Well, if it were me, I would go and create some keyframes, move a few frames between them. Actually, that might be too many. If we want some wacky tabacky movement, I would create four keyframes in the four cardinal directions. Actually, I changed my mind. I want to do it in three cardinal directions, or not, just three in a weird circle. One bottom corner, one top corner, and then one bottom. Copy them and paste them and continually paste them. I think it, I don't think it will do what I want it to do. Some programs, if you keep doing this, it'll like follow, but not so much here, unless I don't know the command, but see, that's a little bit too much. And as bad as it is to say, when you're doing these like effects, I usually just try and, um, I really fiddle with it because that is way too, like you can't even read that shit. So each of these keyframes would have to be significantly less. So let's give it another shot. Just for the demonstration purposes, I stretched between each of those anchor points one frame. You could do two to make it a lot less jarring, or what you could do is have it slowly get to that point. Um, and again, this is just for like, you know, obviously this is not, this is a point in your video where it's like clearly getting ridiculous. You're not doing this for every time text comes on screen. But some people really like this, and I would just like make these go even wider. And you can make these presets, but you would have to do this the same text size each time. So I mean, sometimes I just do it based off of what the object is. But as you can, and then it would just get more crazy. Oh, I forgot where I was here. And I think I'd, you get the point. You would make it progress to get more and more um, contrasting between the positions to sell that sort of craziness. But again, this is if you want these sorts of effects. Not everybody does. Sometimes it's funny. Uh, I personally think this sort of thing has been done to death. Uh, I think there. I think you can take from this and learn and use it in your own ways, right? Because we've talked generally about movement, um, but keyframing is applicable to pretty much every effect in Premiere. Um, and you can do it in many ways, such as with fades, such as with blurs, uh, it, it is, knowing it is extremely powerful and it can change from um it can change you from just having very bland videos to having that one thing that makes them a little bit more eye-catching and again it is tempting to do stuff like this but oftentimes uh let's just start with text again because i kind of just and it can just come in we're this we're just doing this basic one again and a lot of the a lot of some of the best effects take place within a few frames it's, it's like just stuff you don't really notice, but it's because of that whip effect or that that clean just transition that it makes the video feel smooth. It's a it's very much the art of not being noticed. Uh, what I was attempting to do here is have uh, most of the effect whip in like that. I might add a tint. I do go to tint. This is just general if I want to make a whole color of a text there. There's actually not a lot of ways you can do this. It's, you'd be surprised. You're just like, oh, I just want to turn this one thing into one color. Congratulations. The other ways you can do this, there are other ways. Just they actually take up more RAM and they just make your whole program run slowly. So actually tinting stuff is the way I tend to do it. Just be, or color replace. But any other, sorry, this is just a rant because I'm like, it's, to me, it doesn't seem like it's that hard. Any other programs, you just color it one color. I don't need to do all this stuff, like tinting it, just changing the two colors to what you want it to look like. Anyways, gosh, more or less. 
We could add a blur horizontal, maybe make that 40. And then by the time it gets here, it'll be zero. And these are just linear keyframes. Okay. And more or less, um, yeah. <laughs> simple effects. The text itself, super simple, super to the point. And it doesn't need to do too much a lot of the time. And that's probably where you're gonna find a lot of your editing. If you have any more questions about types of videos and types of things you wanna edit, let it be known, like I'll, I'll cover whatever you want me to. Um, and I think I have an idea on how to best do this series. Um, I'm gonna run it by Alejandro first, but it, it's more just I wanna cover editing topics that'll help up and coming editors take their videos from beginner level to something that makes them stand out just a little. Because again, it's tempting to look at some, uh, and I'm guilty of this, you just, uh, have all these crazy edits and they look a lot crazier and unnecessary but you don't need it you can really get away with if you have i'm always a proponent of you have a good script you don't need anything else to be honest with you i'll leave you with that anyways thank you for watching please like the video and subscribe if you like this sort of stuff and i will see you on the flip side